Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap up show. Uh, happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us, for tuning in, spending uh, a couple of minutes with us. The only thing I ask is you could be so kind and take a second to like the video. If you are brand new, subscribe, share, uh, all that good stuff, and hopefully I will continue to provide you uh, day to day value. So let's talk about the tape. So um, obviously, three days ago, we had that uh, pregnant pause. I think that's, that's the best way of saying it. Uh, the blow off pause, not the blow off top. Uh, we came in, uh, we came in you know, pretty decent, pretty decent amount uh, from roughly 487 on the queues uh, all the way down to 473 in about three sessions. And this is the first close below uh, the 10 day moving average uh, in this whole formation. And the key for today's session was could the bears give one more dose, right? Can they give it one more push and confirm yesterday's channel and start bringing in lower prices? And if you woke up this morning, you turned around, you go, wow, you know, here we go again. You had NVIDIA down to 115. Okay. It was down like three and a half uh, at the opening. Everything was down pretty aggressively. And by the time I, by the time I got dressed, went to the gym, got into the sauna, got out of the sauna, got dressed, the NVIDIA was up three, four books, and everything, for the most part, and we'll get to that in a second, was kind of joining it for this kind of rally back, right? Kind of this um, relief move up, because if you look at the last three sessions, pretty you know, pretty good sell-off in the last three sessions. Now, here's where things get a, a little bit creative, right? That's the best way of saying it. What I like to do is I, I'm never one-sided, okay? I, I'm never one-sided. I always go into the trading day saying, well, here's what I'm looking for. Here's my initial game plan. I'm going to do, I'm going to literally sit there until my game plan plays out. If there is a reversal in sentiment and stocks start taking out the previous day's channels back to the upside or to the downside, depending which way I'm looking at, obviously I'm going to shift gears. That's a very, very important way to kind of not paint yourself into a corner because again, a lot of traders come in, they have a bias. It's like a concrete wall. You're a mule. Uh, and you will you you won't be you know you won't be um, you know you won't be flexible. You can be very very stubborn on one side of the market, and that's when you get starting to get run over. So the initial process, the initial thought today was, well, okay, let's see. I'm going to give it for the first hour or so. I'm going to give it every opportunity for the market to come in and see if we can get that another day, right? See if we can get that another uh, aggressive sell off. So nothing was really going down, for the exception of AMD, right? For the exception of AMD. And we caught this really nice move on AMD. It took out this nice channel here. Nice move, you know, you know, dollar and change move. Pretty good cash flow on the trade. I was like, all right, let's wait for others, right? Let's wait for others. Let's wait for others. Here we go. Let's wait for others. And never, others never really came. Um, if you look at the stocks that got hit very, very aggressively, a lot of them really rallied back. And I say a lot of them because not all of them. If you look at uh, SMCI, right? You got a bounce of about sixteen dollars. Okay, if you look at ARM, right, you got a pretty decent bounce. You got a nine dollar bounce, but considering it went from one seventy seven uh, to one forty nine in three days, is that a great bounce? Again, to be determined, right? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So my moral of the story is very simple. If you look at the scoreboard today, it looks very disconnected, right? Incredibly disconnected. Get yeah, the Dow down three hundred points, uh, the Nasdaq up 220 points. And the question is, well, was the market up or down? And, and my answer is, well, who the hell cares? It's not about the market. It's about individual uh, individual setups. I've, I've been saying this for years. The idea of the stock market is debt. The, the stock market hasn't, uh, hasn't been here for a long time. Now we have a market full of stocks. It's like going to the supermarket. I've been saying this for years. When you go to the supermarket, you're not looking to buy the whole supermarket, right? Unless you're like 900 pounds, Okay. You know, you're going to get your bread, your cheese, your milk, whatever the case may be. So that's the same thing with the market. So the idea of the market was up or down today is kind of irrelevant. What is relevant is kind of what we're seeing in front of us. And here's where I can make a case 
for both bull and bear going into tomorrow. Okay, here is the bull case, right? I'm going to make a, a case for both sides. And as adults, we always like to expand our minds, put both sides on the table and have a good, you know, have a good uh, productive conversation, whether it's our, with ourselves, the bipolar sickles that we are, or with another trader. But here's kind of the case, right? So the bull case is, well, we didn't take out yesterday's low, which is bullish. We reclaimed back the 10-day moving average, which is bullish. And a lot of names, right? A lot of names towards the end of the day got very, very strong. Okay. A lot of them did take out the previous day's highs. So for example, NVIDIA, okay, took out the previous day's highs. Meta took out the previous day's highs, right? Uh, Google took out the previous day's highs. Carvana, which was a massive, massive move, took out the previous day's highs. And here's where the bearish case comes in, right? Here's the bearish case. And again, it's up to you uh, watching this broadcast. Uh, I, again, I know what I'm thinking, but it's up to you as a trader to take in all the data and formulate the opinion for yourself. Here's the other side of the equation, right? The other side of the equation is, well, yeah, we didn't take out the previous day's low, but then again, we didn't take out the previous day's high, right? It was a lower high and it was a higher low. So this is technically, right? Technically an inside day. What is an inside day? Well, when you have a directional bias and we had a directional bias now for three days and the following day is a bounce, and that's exactly what we had today, pretty good bounce. Uh, and we didn't take out the previous day's high, didn't take out the previous day's low, it's deemed bearish. Now, before you go crazy, let me explain, right? If you look at the top two, last two days' highs, we've been rejected off the five-day moving average now back-to-back -back days, right? That's the bear case. And the bear case continues, well, if we start losing yesterday's channel, well, we're going to go lower. That's not wrong, but there's a flip side to that, right? What happens tomorrow if we start reclaiming back the five-day moving average? Doesn't that become bullish as well? So it's a very, very interesting scenario going into tomorrow's session. You can definitely, definitely have an opinion on both sides of the market. Let me give you guys the real numbers. Instead of guessing or anticipating, you have real numbers in front of you. For the bulls to continue this bounce from today, the Qs are going to have to reclaim 480. 480 will reclaim back the five-day moving average. The five-day moving average is the shortest-term sentiment, and we're going to go higher. If the bears start reclaiming back 473.82, well, that means today was an inside day. Today was just nothing more than an over, uh, oversold three-day bounce, okay? And the bears are backing to control. So these are the numbers, guys. You don't have to guess. 480 to the upside, 473.82 to the downside. Now, here's where the, the universe of stocks comes into play. Look at, the look at the majority names that didn't participate, didn't take out the previous day's highs, right? Avago, not only did it not take out the previous day's highs, the damn thing was red. SMCI, after selling off, keep this in mind, the stock was 1014 three days ago, okay? Stock was only up 16 bucks. Not really great. You got Apple, right? You got Apple nowhere near the previous day's highs, Right. Again, these are these are facts. Again, you 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 cannot make up facts when you're determining an opinion, uh, a feasibility study for the next day's uh, course of action. So you have to be very very smart about this. Okay, look at AMD. Right, AMD again, super duper weak. Look at LRCX. Right, LRCX never got above previous day's highs. Uh, look at the stocks that that, you know, that just got absolutely killed, right? So you, you're 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 faced with a very interesting situation for tomorrow. Uh, that's why I'm always prepared on both sides of the market. I'll give you some ideas uh, going into tomorrow. But this is a very very unique type of situation because we are so close to the top of the range of the five day, and we're so close from the bottom day of the range. And the one thing that you don't need to uh, have a fight with somebody on social media, you're wrong, you're an idiot. All you got to do is wait for one of these sides to reclaim, right? Either 480 to the upside or 473 and change to the downside. And then you'll see exactly which way uh, the money flow uh, will come in. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, Carvana today was huge, absolutely huge. We've been talking about Carvana now for a couple of days. If you guys remember, it got back above the, the, the 15 area. And this is the highest close now in the whole formation. 
triggered the 129 area. Watch this thing for tomorrow. If this thing can start building, and the only reason why it stopped today was this linear regression line. If it can get back above the linear regression line for tomorrow, this thing can zoom up. This thing looks really, really good. Uh, look at you know, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, uh, again, NVIDIA stopped right below the 5, 10-day moving average. I believe they do have a shareholder meeting tomorrow. I could be wrong. I believe it's for tomorrow. The only thing, again, guys, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer. I'm trying to present facts because so you can make logical, you know, logical choices for yourself, you know, out, outside the webinar, right? Tesla also had an event. You guys remember Tesla also had an event. They sold it all. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying they're going to do the same thing for NVIDIA. It's just something to consider. That's it. Again, you don't want to go into anything knowing there is an event and you're going in eyes wide shut. Just something to consider. They do have a shareholders meeting. We'll see what they say on the shareholders meeting. But from, from a technical point of view, NVIDIA needs to reclaim back the 5, 10 day cross so it can move higher. Again, keep an eye on that as well. Grinder, right? I know some of you guys are on Grinder, right? Don't at me, bro. Look at Grinder. Somebody came in today with a $14 July calls. Basically, they're looking for a 40% move in the stock. I don't know, right? Are you on Grinder? I'm not on Grinder. Are you on Grinder? We all know you're on Grinder, right? Watch the top of the range here on Grinder. You know, it takes out this uh, channel here from the middle of June. Maybe this thing wakes up. Keep an eye on, on Grinder. Let me give you guys a couple of more plays. Uh, a couple of more plays going into uh, tomorrow. Uh, da -da 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 the video we talked about, Carvado we talked about. Are we allowed to talk about Tesla? Are we allowed? Are we allowed? It's a very honest question. Because every time I talk about it, it never does anything. It hasn't done anything for four or five months. I'm going to talk about it. Doesn't mean it's going to do anything, but I'm going to talk about it. So we're sitting in this big channel here, okay? Very, very tight channel. Look. Eventually, this damn thing in this lifetime or the next is going to confirm the top of this channel or the bottom, okay? I'm rooting for this thing to take out the top of the channel. As much as we all love NVIDIA and Amazon and Google and this one and that one, there's something about a Tesla route. And you guys all know this. All you guys have been training Tesla for years. And this is why it's been so so frustrating. That it hits differently. When a Tesla rally appears and you have a big measure of potential and you have expansion channels and you have a two, three-day move, it just feels different. So in this lifetime or the next, right? For this lifetime or the next, I'm going to watch the top of the range here. If we can finally get back above the top of the range, maybe, maybe, just maybe, we can get a move into the April highs, okay? It's a freaking bull market, man. Am I really asking that much for a stock that is a cult following to participate for at least a couple of days in a bull market? Really not a lot to ask for. But then again, here we are for four months talking about it. So definitely watching Tesla, uh, hymns, hers, man, look at the, the grinder, hymns, hers theme is really kicking in today, right? Just like grinder, hymns today got rejected off the five and 10 day. Keep an eye on this thing. Watch this uh, hymns. If it starts reclaiming back the 10 day, maybe this thing wakes up. You know, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, Meta looks good. Nice little pivot today on Meta uh, from that four, 507.80 level, almost went to 511. You know, Meta starting is setting up pretty well. Uh, Microsoft is holding up uh, fairly well. So the question is, what's going to happen tomorrow? Again, it's an open question. It's to be determined. But it, again, as a professional trader, and I don't care if you're trading for a week, a year, or 10 years, or 25 years, that the point is you need to be prepared. If you're not prepared, uh, again, you can't make that excuse. Well, I'm only a part-time trader. I don't care if you're a part-time trader and you trade once a year, right? Your preparation needs to be full-time. The market doesn't care that you're doing this as a hobby, right? The market cares that you're prepared. If you're not prepared, the person on the other side of your trade that's been doing this for a long time, that has a pretty big piggy bank, okay, will take your money with a smile on his or her face and won't blink twice. So it's very, very important. And the fact that we are in such a tight little two-day channel, one of these areas are going to build, right? If we reclaim back the five, everything should line up. If we re get rejected off the five and start taking back yesterday's channel, then we have more room uh, to the downside. So that's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope everybody is doing well. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the field. Have a good night, guys.